And welcome to the Daily Space Weather Smash Show here coming at you from the Smash News Network, least busted name of news. Flaring is back. The radio flux has increased and geomagnetic storm conditions have returned. We'll talk about it. We'll go around the horn. We'll show you lots of info. Funky ionosphere activity continues. There's sunspot 3176. Two M-class flares there appearing at the end of that video. Let's go around the horn starting with the northwestern limb. There you can see the CME that we talked about yesterday. That is the eruption of the Serena Williams solar filament. Looking at the southwest, some prominences down there as well. A couple of small sunspot groups in the southern hemisphere. Here is the southeastern limb. And let's go back to that northeastern limb. That sunspot's grown a bit since yesterday. We'll talk about it in more depth a little bit later in the video. First, let's take a look at yesterday plus today from SDO intensity gram. So some umbral growth there and some separation between the leading and trailing umbrae. These groups here are not too shabby either. Most of the other sunspot groups have been largely stable. This group in the south has largely evaporated entirely. This group up, this group over here in the southeast has degraded a little bit as well. So <clears throat> there's colorized magnetogram for the same period yesterday plus today. And before we move on to things like earthquakes and volcanoes, take a moment to visit our links. If you haven't done so, welcome to the Neo Renaissance. Congratulations on realizing the channel exists. Smashamash.com is the official homepage of the Smash News Network, least busted name and news. You can link to the Smash Team site, so do us a favor and do that. Do yourself a favor and become a member of SureMed if you haven't already done so. SureMed, right? There's the link on the homepage. It's not insurance. It's an association with the American Better Health Organization, a nonprofit focused on improving your health. You could also get me as your agent of record if you sign up through my link. If you've got Medicare and you'd like me to help you out with health insurance or you've got other insurance needs, give me a call. I will hook you up. So, yeah, check out SureMed if you haven't done that. Links below the video as well as on the homepage. And let's take a look at volcanoes. Volcanoes. Some are erupting. Stromboli is actually erupting. A new lava flow has showed up there. Mark Zuckerberg has already purchased and built a wall around it. Stromboli. So another lava flow there at Stromboli. Shivalut John Kamchatka exploding flight level 150. It's a 15,000 foot ash plume, 10,000 foot ash plume over Manam as it explodes. Popocatépetl exploding in central Mexico, flight level 200. Fuego in Guatemala exploding, flight level 170. I believe that's an uptick at Fuego. 17,000 foot ash plume. Sangue, 20,000 foot ash plume as it explodes. Revenador exploding, flight level 140. 14,000 foot ash plume. Sabancaya, 24,000 foot ash plume over Chile. And Villa Rica continues to erupt as well. The volcanic alert remains elevated. As some ejecta there showing up from the Peruvian. I'm, I'm sorry, the central Chilean volcano, Villarica. Let's look at seismicity next. No major quakes over the past 24. We will briefly revisit the 5.5 that occurred in Ethiopia, a rare spot for a quake. South of Saudi Arabia there. There was also a 5.1 at the Izu Islands. We're double reporting on it because we did our video so late yesterday. Anyway, that is among the largest quakes. Some aftershocks there occurring at Ethiopia as well. Japan had a 4.9. South Sandwich Islands had a 5.1. Tonga had a 5.5. That one came in at 1 o'clock this morning on the 27th. Tonga also had a 5.0 at 3.46. Indonesia had a 5.0 at 8 o'clock universal time this morning and let's get back to space 
plenty of stuff going on in space, like geomagnetic storm conditions. Noah nailed it. And thanks for leaving a comment, Tin Man 1057 Good morning to you as well. So this is the closest star of the last 24 hours in ionized iron. Two different wavelengths, 171 and 193 angstroms. The radio flux has come up. So the 10.7 centimeter radio flux, which is the most proportional data set to sunspot number, has come up to 150 solar flux units. That comes from right around where my pointer is there, the upper chromosphere and lower corona. There's the one-year chart of that to put it in context. Again, radio flux now up to 150 solar flux units. And Space Weather Enthusiast dashboard was quite correct here. We did, oh, it looks like they downgraded it since yesterday, but nonetheless, geomagnetic storm conditions did indeed show up. We'll get to that here in a moment. We do have an elevated solar wind. Some minor geomagnetic unrest forecasted for the rest of the day there by NOAA. And let's take a look at Earth's magnetic moment from space. Here is croissant Earth for the past four hours. That is magnetohydrodynamic pressure. What's going on is we've got a low density but high speed solar wind and a strong negative BZ component creating those geomagnetic storm and unrest conditions. Here's the last four hours of Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. It's our ground magnetic perturbations animation here. And if you've seen some aurorae, make sure you let us know in the comments or drop us a line on Twitter or perhaps on Instagram, and we will feature your auroral imagery on the channel. Again, that's the last four hours of Earth's magnetic moment from the ground. Let's take a look at the auroral forecast. Some significant aurorae there expected. So follow us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, and uh, yeah, drop us a line if you've been photographing or taking videos of aurorae. If you think you're seeing aurorae, make sure you take some imagery of it with your phone because a lot of the light emitted is ultraviolet, which is not visible to the human eye. It might be visible to your phone the same way your infrared signal from your remote control might be visible to your phone camera. Of course, that's the other end of the electromagnetic spectrum. Anyway, that's your 30-minute auroral forecast. And let's continue on to the KP index, which is pushing geomagnetic storm conditions here. 4.67, very close to a G1 level geomagnetic storm at KP5. Again, current conditions are KP 4.67. And when we look at the real-time solar wind, we can see that there is a strong negative BZ component. So if you look at this top pane right here, you see this strong negative signal. Total field is currently 8 nanotesla, and the BZ is negative 7. So that strong BZ signal creates induction. That magnetic field orientation creates induction in the Earth system, and that's the main culprit for the uh, geomagnetic storm conditions, geomagnetic unrest conditions. Solar wind density very low here, showing up below 1 proton per cubic centimeter. Solar wind velocity about 520 kilometers per second. And let's look at magnetic data next. Some very spiky readings there showing up on GOES 16 and GOES 17 there. Keep in mind they are measuring the magnetic fields from their geosynchronous orbits at about 22,000 miles of altitude. Next, top view ecliptic plane field plot showing us that there will be a south pole current sheet likely rapidly heading this way. It could be here as early as tomorrow. I would say certainly by Thursday, but we'll have to see what happens. Earth is currently in a North Pole current sheet depicted here in green, South Pole current sheet there depicted in red. Expecting it to accelerate with the growth of that sunspot 3176 in a north, northeastern limb. Here's your line of sight field plot. Solar B field, blah, 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 blah. Solar B field in blue, solar Polar fields in green for north, red for south, which brings us to coronal holes. So there's the coronal hole line of sight plot. 
we have got some south pole oriented coronal holes here rotating in in the east there's the latest image at the moment mostly north pole oriented coronal holes facing earth and here's the view from sdo so these are south pole these are north pole these down here are actually south pole so these are south these are north and these new ones rotating in are south. They will get more defined in a couple of days, most likely. And before we get to sunspots, take a moment to press like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Tell your friends and foes about us as the content continues to be deboosted all over the internet, whether it's the pathetic deboosting of Twitter, of Meta slash Facebook, of Google. Of course, Apple is involved as well creating concerted efforts to censor certain speech, even though it's not illegal. Check out the 12 Days of Smash Miss if you haven't heard it. We put out 12 original tracks for the first 12 days of December. You can also find playlists about cosmology. We also did some product reviews recently on some wheat beers and about cold weather bicycling. If you want to know what I was wearing when it was only 17 degrees out check out the videos. You can also find links to the Hemp Lucid shop below the video. Thanks to everybody who's picked up products. The most popular is the organic full spectrum water soluble CBD tincture. Huge savings available there on the website. So check it out. You can use our link to save some cash. You can also use the promo code SMASHOMASH10 on checkout. SMASHOMASH10 on checkout will save you some dough. Whether it's stress relieving mushrooms or sleep inducing mushrooms or cbd products of various different types including even cbd for your pets you can also read testimonials and so on once again thanks to everybody who's left comments and so on about the different products from hemp lucid and thanks to hemp lucid our latest sponsor slash affiliate also you may find our Red Bubble Shop if you click the links below the video or on the homepage. You'll find a link to the Red Bubble Shop. The Smash O merch is linked in order of best selling. There's recently been a shakeup at the top. Do Not Pole Vault the Caldera has become the top seller. So if you'd like to give Smash staff a raise, and she desperately needs one, pick up some merch or become a member of the Smash team. More on that later in the video. Today's featured product is. And by the way, congratulations on surviving global democide so far. Today's featured product is a re-release. It is the Smasher Price My First Pandemic. So congratulations on surviving a global pandemic so far. As the pathetic and putrid censorship continues on big tech platforms, for some reason people delusionally think that it's been fixed on Twitter. And while we do appreciate Elon Musk exposing the pathetic and putrid malfeasance by Twitter and making it obvious that other big tech corporations are also just as putrid as Twitter, Elon has also stated that the deboosting continues. Content moderation has not been changed. If you think the shadow bans are gone on Twitter, here's a wake up call. Enter into the real world. Deboosting continues. It's as pathetic as it was. Exposing the truth is great, but actually mitigating the censorship would be even greater, a thing that has not occurred. So once again, congratulations on surviving a global scandemic so far. You're doing a fine job, and let's get to sunspots. So, ha, yeah, is what's going on with sunspots. As we stated yesterday, this one got a name, 3176. And it is the main source of solar flaring. Let's take a look at these sunspots in a little bit more a detail. Here's your SDO magnetogram for the past 24 hours. Again, a little growth in the northeast, a little bit of degradation in the south. That should be evident on this 24-hour SDO continuum video. Great imagery there. And let's zoom out. And how about 
add one. Uh, let's add, let's zoom out and add ionized helium there. There's the SDO continuum plus 304 angstroms. A livelier <laughs> composite. And keep an eye on that northeastern limb. There could be plenty of activity to continue. So as far as relativistic particles, we don't have any. The Gauss proton flux here remains flatlined. So despite those M flares, no spikes in the proton flux there, no proton events. There are the two M flares. The largest one was early this morning. Peak flux was around zero dark 50. It was an M2. This other one was barely an M-class flare. That occurred a little bit more recently there. Peak flux of that one was at 820 this morning. And that was a that was an M something. It's clearly M. An M1.06. Well, let's take a look at some flares. Here's the 131 angstroms full disk view. Let's zoom in on the Sunspot 3176. It's definitely the place to watch. Let's add 94 angstroms to that same view. Let's subtract 131 angstroms and just view 94 by itself. And let's zoom back out and show the full solar disk in that wavelength. 94 angstroms, another species of ionized iron the emissions there in the ultraviolet spectrum. Continuing on to a star chart, I'm always interested in what's going on overhead, so I show a star chart daily. That's what's going on over Lehigh Valley. The blue line is the galactic plane, the yellow line is the ecliptic, the path the sun will take across the sky. We've got no planets at the moment. No planets, no moon, and no sun at the moment. It is a dark sky over Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. Next, our solar system forecast, we've got a crescent waxing moon. Let's advance this one week. There's where things will be on January 3rd. We will have a gibbous waxing by then as Earth moves into the lonely side of the solar system, the side lacking gas giants. Next, let's look at some coronal mass ejections as there have been some. Some people might be suggesting that they're earthly directed. Well, guess what? They're not earthly directed. You see MEs are on the far side of the sun. That was yesterday. Here's today's frames. That's 36 more frames. Courtesy George Mason University. And let's take a look at the view from Stereo A as well, located at Lagrange 5. We'll also show the Soho Lasco C3 on the right, located at Lagrange 1. And for you new viewers, Earth would be behind you from the perspective of the Soho Lasco C3 coronagraph. Earth would be off in this orientation from Stereo A's coronagraph. And you will notice that there is no earthly directed coronal mass ejecta. There's one kind of in the vicinity of Earth there, but definitely not directed toward Earth. Most of those CMEs are on the far side. They may look like halos. They just aren't. Here's the last 24 hours in composite. Great SDO, 304 angstroms plus Soho Lasco C2 and C3. We'll zoom out. So some great CMEs there. None of those directed toward Earth. Not even close. There's 24 hours zoomed way out to show nearly the full view from Soho Lasco C3. So that's pretty sweet. Next we'll move to filaments to see how likely additional CMEs are and the answer is very likely. Not as many filaments as we had a few days ago but still quite a few here. I noticed the Venus Williams 
filament is still there. You can see the Serena Williams. There goes a Serena Williams. It's ejected. It is now headed out into space somewhere. We have another active region rising down here as well. So there could be more sunspots about to rise here as we see the solar activity increasing once again. And once again, let's play Name That Filament. So still inviting everybody to join us on Twitter, the pathetically censored and putrid big tech platform where big tech doesn't think that it faces accountability. Well, it turns out there's accountability for everything. And once again, you're invited as our viewers to name that filament. Yeah, we've got, ooh, we're all the way up to 341 followers now. Oh my God, 341 followers. Wow, we are just, we're blowing up here. We're blowing up thanks to Elon. Pardon my sarcasm. Hey, Elon, thanks for fixing censorship on Twitter, even though you've retained the pathetic deboosting features and done absolutely nothing to remove shadow bans. A fine job, sir. A fine job. You totally don't mislead investors. Pardon the sarcasm. Next, the last 24 hours from SDO. This is where we started out, actually. We started with the 304 plus 131 angstroms wavelengths. That is a good composite. Let's look at the last couple of hours here in a wider field of view from the GOES-16 SUVI. We zoom it to 67% and then we stream it all day long on the regs. Twitch.tv slash smash mash is where this video was originally streamed. If you don't catch our content live, well, the Daily Space Weather videos get set to private. They get unpublished. And then they become YouTube exclusives until they're available on BitChute also after the YouTube premiere plays. That's the last couple of hours there from the GO16 SUVI. And that moves us to our bonus feature segment. We do have some satellite charging hazards here at the moment. There's the satellite's community dashboard showing some surface charging here in the Pacific Ocean and the uh, Western Caribbean. So those surface charging hazards caused by low energy electrons building up on the outsides of spacecraft. There is your GOES electron flux. The GOES-16 and GOES-17 measure the electron flux at the F layer from their geosynchronous orbits. And we are expecting to go back into warning levels perhaps today. And for you new viewers, the N's and M's, those stand for noon and midnight local time for the satellites. Here's the NOAA forecast for the electron flux. And uh, no arguments there. The green boxes are the forecast. The yellow diamonds are the observation. There is the one-year chart to put it in context. As we're right around electron warning levels here. Let's take a look at the F-ionosphere, since it is where the GO-16 and GO-17 endeavor to make their radiographic measurements of the electron flux. It's located at 300 kilometers of altitude. Here's the vibrational frequency, and we're seeing major anomalies here in the F-layer. So big-time anomalies here showing up. Um, if you're not familiar with looking at the ionosphere map, don't worry. We'll show you the anomaly gram anyway. Even if you are used to looking at it, we're going to show you the anomaly gram. Because we've got huge anomalies continuing. Especially the South Pacific anomaly. So you're going to see wild swings here from low to high frequency anomaly. This is anomaly in megahertz from a 30-day median. And the most important thing to cite is this fact. South Atlantic Anomaly is no longer over the South American continent and is in front of my arrow there. So that's possibly the weirdest thing that we've ever covered on the channel. The South Atlantic Anomaly moved from the South Atlantic to the South American continent and now has moved way down to here. So I find that interesting. What about you? 
apparently were the only channel reporting on it. And probably most people have not heard about this because of pathetic censorship on the Internet. Yeah, we run multiple businesses which are being hampered by the misleading of investors by companies like Google, Apple, Facebook, and Twitter. Here's your latest image on the F layer. That's 1145 Universal Time. Once again, huge anomalies occurring there on the ionosphere map. Continuing on to our total electron content, free electrons can distort your GPS signal, causing huge GPS errors. Let's check those out. And we do have some quite high total electron contents here. That is all the way from the inner portion of the outer Van Allen belt down to your GPS handset. Huge GPS errors expected over the African rift zone here northwest of Madagascar. Here's your total electron content animated map. We are seeing some significant nighttime GPS errors happening over places like the Caribbean, the Central Pacific, the Central Atlantic. Those are the most likely places to see GPS errors over the planet. And let's take a look at the latest intensity gram and the latest colorized magnetogram. So there's our, there's our main culprit for producing large flares. Sunspot 3176. It has grown impressively since yesterday. We do have a new region rising in the south as well. We can just see the fields there making its way over the over the limb. You can see that powerful south pole oriented field there. I think it's too early to see any umbrae, and indeed it is. No sunspots yet visible. And hey, let's do one more thing. Do one more thing. And that thing is meteorology. So it's time, time for us to move to the realm of meteorology. First, you're all invited to become members of the Smash Team. Yes, members of the Smash Team. It's the official website of the Smash News Network, least busted name in news. It's our subscription services site. We replaced Patreon, but we are still on Patreon. We needed further capabilities. So we built our own website back in 2019. A year in which a crack YouTube unit was sent to social media prison for a crime we didn't commit. We promptly escaped the maximum security, pathetic, and putrid social media stockade to the Internet Underground, where we survive as producers of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find the content, maybe you can hire the Smash Team. We highly recommend that you view our videos via our website. If you click Posts, you'll be able to see all of our latest posts. And if you are a gold or silver member especially, make sure you log in. You may see content otherwise not visible since we provide additional content to our paid subscribers. Thanks to the gold and silver Smash Team level members. Look for the credit crawl coming back before 2023. And now it's time for meteorology. We're starting things out with sea surface temperatures and currents. Why? Because the Gulf Stream, of course. So you can see a bunch of cold water up here. And you can see the Gulf Stream making it all the way to Ireland and Iceland. If you, if you think the AMOC, the Atlantic Meridional Overturning Circulation, is shutting down, well, it's not. Europe is, well, it has been kind of cold, but the Gulf Stream is still working. <laughs> so... There is no year without a summer in Europe. Uh, the Gulf Stream is still warming up the continent. And the Northern Hemisphere is not descending into an ice age, apparently. Because if it was, the AMOC would be shutting down. The albedo effect would be taking over in a positive feedback mechanism, which apparently causes the Earth to descend into the more common state of glaciation that it's been in over the past, say, 30 million years. 
Another fun fact is that Antarctica, yes, Antarctica, the ice sheet formed about 33 million years ago when the temperature was 3 degrees Celsius warmer than it is today, just in case you're worried about Antarctica melting. Uh, it was 3 degrees Celsius warmer when the Antarctic ice sheet originally formed. Anyway, let's show some wind. There's what's going on in the eastern world as far as wind. And you can see a lot of suckage happening right here. A lot of lines pointed toward that low because most wind is created by sucking, not blowing. These are the jet streams of the east. We still do have some backward jet stream over the Indian Ocean and the Western Pacific. The realm of Oceania. Here are the jet streams of the west. Very chaotic jet stream here over North America and lots of cold air being injected all the way down to Florida, where there are freeze warnings. Very chaotic jet stream there in the northern hemisphere in general. Really, it's in the south also. So quite a bit of jet stream chaos happening there in both hemispheres. There are the surface winds. We've got a strong low here off of Vancouver. Here are the surface winds of the central world. Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. And these are the jet streams. So there you go. Hopefully that helped you with global weather patterns. And let's take a look at the clouds and fog scenario over the Americas. Some rapid cloud nucleation happening there over Brazil. And it's getting very cloudy over most of California. Continuing on to our weather.gov map, if your county's lit, click your county. We'll briefly scroll down to show you the key here. Weather.gov is the site that we're on, the website of the National Weather Service. Avalanche warnings there, continuing in Montana and Idaho. Let's do some forecasts. Here's your pressure and precipitation forecast for the next 72 hours based on the GFS model and some very heavy precipitation making its way into California, Washington, and Oregon especially. Also, the Rockies getting some additional snow and some strong storms expected to pop up in Arkansas and northwestern Louisiana. We'll also show temperature anomaly forecast. This is the same model, the GFS 72-hour temperature anomaly forecast in degrees Celsius. Some much warmer temperatures coming to at least, well, large parts of the country there. We show 72-hour forecasts because they tend to be accurate, and we don't like to spout nonsense on the channel, and instead cite facts. Yes, it's very controversial, citing facts. It's a very controversial thing to do in 2022. And what can we check out on windy.com? Let's see. How about let's go for, how about visibility? That's always interesting. There is your visibility index. Perhaps you are a pilot, in which case you wouldn't want to be flying right here because the, vis the visibility is barely a half mile. Another interesting feature there of windy is that visibility map. Check it out, they got a free app as well, windy.com, we're not paid to say it yet. Perhaps that'll be one of our new affiliates slash sponsors. Windy.com, drop us a line. Next, our NASA goes lightning mapper. We've got some lightning approaching the Eastern Caribbean here, it looks like. That's about the last 10 hours. And let's continue on here we don't want the video to be too lengthy. This is your real-time lightning map from lightningmaps.org. Things are mostly calm here as far as lightning goes, as at least where the sensors are located. Not a lot of lightning at the moment. Here's your U.S. Doppler, and there is a lot of moisture in the uh, Pacific Northwest. We're going to focus on the lower 48. Also, Miami experiencing some precipitation there. Let's take out the clouds and fog map. There's 3.9 nanometer infrared radiation. It's still dark over most of the country. And there is your water vapor map. Look at all that moisture making its way 
into Utah, Wyoming, on its way to Colorado, New Mexico, etc. That is quite a bit of moisture. You could call it an atmospheric river. Anyway, here's your recap. Facts. Very controversial. Thanks to collusion between utterly, utterly criminal corporations and certain bureaucrats at the government level who would like your speech suppressed. Anyway, there is your shortwave radiation map. It's clouds and fog, and there is the water vapor. That should clear things up if your Doppler is not looking too clear. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of moisture. And uh, yeah, stay dry, people in the Pacific Northwest. And congratulations on realizing the channel exists, everybody out there. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash mash signing off from the Smash News Network, least busted name in news, and may that solar wind be at your back. Facts stated in this video not necessarily the opinion of Smash News Network, least busted name in news.